Hey guys, it's Mario here. I am at the AFPT convention in Oslo, Norway with a very special guest for you guys today. This uh, gentleman here is named Alan Aragon. If you never heard of him before, uh, I'm sure now you will definitely want to look up his, some of his stuff. Welcome, Alan. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Mario. The professor. <laughs> the professor. <laughs> uh, can you give a little bit of an intro for the viewers, for those who don't know you? Well, well like I said, my name is Alan Aragon, and I am... A researcher, writer, educator, former trainer, uh, <laughs> wear a bunch of different hats, but right now I'm mostly focused on, on research. So nutrition and uh, sports nutrition, integrating nutrition and exercise, that line of research, and also altering body composition, so those are my areas of focus. Some of, your uh, some of your nutrition research was actually, I mean, among top five, you have a couple of papers in the Journal of uh, International Society of Sports Nutrition, right? Yes. yes. You have a couple of top papers and one of yours most downloaded uh, paper, most viewed one, right? Most viewed paper in the history of the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. The name of the article is nutrient timing revisited so that's the article that all the bros who were running to just trip over a protein shake after workout just like wow okay this changed everything so uh, that's the one that's <laughs> now the one. that i have alan here i wanted to take this chance to really discuss a little bit the uh low carb versus high carb uh diet comparison mm -hmm. for guys who are, let's say are let's say more sedentary also versus guys who are athletes uh, also for women, uh, both categories apply. Um, what are your thoughts, I mean, on the current state of evidence? That's something that we first want to look mm -hmm. into. Yeah, it's kind of a big question because there's a lot involved. Um, and one of the parts of the answer is a question in and of itself. So we have to ask w exactly what sporting activity are we looking at? So generally speaking, um, activities that involve a high intensity element where there's um, just like a high level of uh, near maximal efforts and um, a lot of anaerobic type work or near anaerobic work, then that type of activity is going to have a higher demand for carbohydrate. And that's because carbohydrate produces more ATP per unit of time than uh, dietary fat does. So athletes like sprinters, uh, athletes in team sports, athletes in mixed sports such as, uh, uh, you know, like boxing or mixed martial arts and things like that. Uh, those type of athletes, they have either, you know, either constant or at least intermittent high intensity uh, bouts within their, within their competitive uh, stints or even within their training. And those folks benefit from not undercarbing. Exactly, yeah. It's, it doesn't have to be 800 grams of carbs a day, guys. I mean, but just don't deprive yourself. Like, don't be like, I, I'm going to eat 100 grams of carbs. So if, that's if, right. if you need more, right? If you need more, that's the question. That's right. That's right. And I mean, there, there is kind of a misconception that uh, carbohydrates, because they're not essential for survival, then you don't need to have them. Well, there is, you have to make a distinction between essential for survival versus essential for optimizing high intensity training or high intensity exercise performance or competition. So that's the distinction that needs to be made. And right now the evidence is just not in favor of, like I said, undercarbing or certainly uh, going close to ketogenic or within ketogenic carb levels as an athlete with um, high intensity training demands. So, so we're looking, that, that was from a standpoint of performance. Now let's look at a little bit from a standpoint of body composition, basically losing weight, uh, gaining weight, which is something that maybe you heard that people say, well, carbs make you fat or mm -hmm. uh, insulin makes you fat because you spike insulin every time you eat carbs. And also, of course, when you eat protein, and most people don't know that. <laughs> but. Um, why do people think that a low-carb diet might be more superior in a case? What does the evidence say about that? Okay, um, the evidence basis of the research comparing low-carb versus high-carb or conventional type dieting, uh, it typically tends towards showing the superiority of the, of the low-carb dieting for a, a simple goal like weight loss. And the reason why this is is because the evidence to date almost always fails to match calories and protein. 
So even the controlled stuff that matches calories still doesn't match protein. So once you optimize protein intake and you match it between conditions, for the goal of weight loss or fat loss, the proportion of carbohydrate and fat, it makes no meaningful difference. Now the only time it would is if you take a look at training demands and then when you factor in athletic performance, well then it can make a difference. But for things like weight loss, and when you say optimize protein, what are we? What, what kind of ranges are we talking about here? Just a rough guideline for right. Generally speaking, the literature points to a low end of 1.2 grams per kilo, to a high end of oh, 1.8, or some might say 2.0. Uh, there is some breaking research that, that indicates even higher than that. But we're looking at uh, grams per kilo of body weight. So. Um, if we were to look at uh, protein requirement on the basis of grams per kilo of lean body mass or fat-free mass, then you're looking at a different set of numbers. So yeah. a recent review by my, my friend and colleague Eric Helms uh, came down with the recommendation of 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass would be the ideal protein range for lean trained subjects under dieting or hypocaloric conditions. Yeah, so looking that, to get shredded. <laughs> that, right, right. That translates to, in, in terms of pounds, it's um, 1 to 1.4 grams per pound of lean body mass. <laughs> so that's kind of a, you know, kind of a handful. But um, generally speaking, I would begin protein requirements in terms of optimization at a gram per pound of lean body yeah, mass. Yeah, keep it simple uh, for a beginning and then you can kind of di dial in. Yeah. And uh, for you guys that are fat free, man, what is that? Well, you just take your current body weight and take off the fat, basically, by percentage. Right. What you can estimate, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you, you can't even measure that. Uh, Easy way to do that or kind of a <laughs> quick and dirty uh, 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 proxy for a lean body mass would be your target body weight. That's a so, really good one, yeah. Tar you know, just imagine what target body weight you would you would Right, and then you would, you would base protein around that. So, for example, you can make it real kind of simple. Um, you can do two, uh, two grams of protein per kilogram of uh, target body weight. And then, um, then you, you're kind of right in the neighborhood yeah. of what's a, a research-backed recommendation. So, so in terms of a diet, let's say if, um, if, if we're looking at general like superiority, as you said, there's really no superiority, although there is research, I mean, for some people, they, they are just more adhere, they just adhere to a low carb diet a little bit better, their personal preference, right? So right. What, what Alan is really big on is choose what works for you. I mean, it doesn't take a long, how would you say, like a couple of weeks, you could figure out whether you respond, uh, yeah. what's your... Everybody's different with respect to their preference for a higher carb or a lower carb diet. So um, there are some people who genuinely like a richer, fattier diet. And if that is your preference, then just you know optimize protein a gram per pound of lean body mass. To start off with that. Yeah. Or you know well, technically you can start at like if we're talking international use. Yeah, yeah. We're, two point two grams yeah, kilos, per kilogram yeah, of, of lean body mass. You guys can <laughs> copy that. You know, you know, I got to I got to figure out whether I'm talking to the international audience or the mainly American United audience. States and uh, and Canada, but a lot of UK, a lot of uh, that still pounds, but a lot of European like Croatia we use. Kilograms, yeah. um, but it's really good to know that again. It really comes down to personal preference and nutrient timing, and you, that's one of your big, big things that you're researching. Is don't worry about it so much until you dial down the calories and the protein, right? And then that's right. Get that's that a, stuff down, and then the shuffling of carb fat proportion should be left to the personal preference of the individual. It's whatever you can comply with best. Exactly. And the best diet is what you can stick to, right? Yes. That's uh, yeah, different people feel better on different proportions of carb and fat and that's perfectly fine. And there's some adaptation period as well. Uh, let's say you want to try, someone who wants to try intermittent fasting and mm -hmm. there's an adaptation period, right, from, from right. the literature you saw as well. Uh, what, what, how many weeks would you say, let's say, if you switch from like a regular eating pattern, let's say you eat like four or five meals, eat instantly after you wake up and you want to try something like intermittent fasting, maybe mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. nine hour window, maybe like a four or an eight, whatever window. Sure, you know, um, you just have to give it, I'd say a minimum of two weeks, just to see how your body responds. Uh, generally speaking, whenever you want to try a, a new dietary plan or program, you want to give it a full month 
just to, to see how your body responds to it in terms of your performance, your mood, and how you take to it. Um, in most cases, when you try something drastically different, your body is going to fight it, and you're not going to enjoy it, certainly, you know, for the first couple weeks at least. And so you try to drag it to a month and see how you respond to it. So I would give it a month. Yeah, at least a month of, uh, and then some might say, oh, a month is a long time. Man, like, <laughs> month is really not that big. <laughs> it's of, not that uh, big of an investment. Especially yeah. today, we talked about the actual rates that you would recommend the weight loss uh, mm -hmm. based on, on, on the experience, based on body fat levels. That That's the big deal here. So the, the leaner you are, you really need to take it slow, right? The leaner yes. you get, it, it, we're talking about a longer, longer period. If you're someone who is very, very overweight, then... Go at it, you know, at right. least a little bit in the beginning. Right. Um, so I want to thank Alan here. I will link to his uh, books in the description below. I'll, I'll link to your profile as well as social media. He's, uh, you're, you're active on social media, right? You post a lot of I'm selfies. mostly Facebook. <laughs> uh, my wife just just recently got me on Instagram because, you know, I, I've got to reach, got to reach the youngins a little bit. You're uh, posting some Instagram selfies, some some good bicep shots. And, yeah, I don't want to. I, I don't want to go head up with this. No, guy. I, I'm like I, I need to know. hide. We're just in this out <laughs> angling debate. I'm just creating an angle where you can't. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I get out angled by you, and, and no matter what angle I try. So we're not even going to go there, man. Thank you for appearing in the Thank channel. You so much, man. And uh, I'm looking forward to wherever your next talk is. If I'm nearby, um, you can definitely. I'm, I'm excited to hear. I mean. This guy's on top of his research, and that's, you need people like this. It's rare to see you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Awesome. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.